Welcome back to Modeling Time with me, Brian Bannon. In this video, we're going to finish building the KONG two bay hopper. In the last few videos, we put the, all the wire bits in, the rope pulls, um, I got the channel put in, you know, cut the ribs off the side and put the channel in. So in this uh, episode, we're going to finish the model as far as building it. We have the uh, the train line plumbing in that'll go on this side from here to here and we have the roof walk to put on and I have to modify the bolster so I can put uh, Kato trucks on it. Um, on this model I have I mean I don't understand why when a company makes an undecorated model I know I've said this before why they glue everything on they've glued the roof walk on so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to cut I was gonna have to cut it off anyway, but um, I mean fill the holes and cut it so they basically filled the holes for me. I just have to trim the pins out and such. So uh, let me get the camera set up over the work area and we'll get started on finishing the build portion of this model. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the airline plumbing. I use twenty-two thousandths wire. Now, um, Detail Associates 22 thousandths wire is not easy to find anymore. At least it, I've, the places that I usually look don't have it. Doing a search online, I can't find it either. But there are alternative sources. One is Clover House. Uh, part number 247 is 22 thousandths. Actually, it's 0 .0225, you can see right there. So I bought three packs of this. Um, so I got 30 pieces of wire there. The other alternative is you can buy a spool of 25 thousandths brass wire. Now, the reason why I say it's 25 thousandths, what you do is you take an end, you take a, you know, a length of wire and you cut it. You take an end, you, you secure that in a vise. On the other end, you take some pliers or something that will hold it really tight and you give it a good tug. It will straighten the wire, it will stretch the wire enough that it will bring it down to 22 thousandths. So there's a lot of wire right there. So I can stretch it down to 22 thousandths. Now, for making the brake line, I made this little tool here. And these point, these are 25, uh, or I'm sorry, quarter inch diameter uh, dowels and then you take your 22 thousandths wire and you stick it down in there and this will all hold it tightly while we're bending it. Now how did I figure out how far to part to make these? Well I just went underneath here and figured about where I wanted the turn ins to be measured that and if you can see the drawn let me zoom in a little bit here I'll try to keep this on camera, unlike I did some of the other stuff in the last video. You see the pencil lines on there? That indicates the outside edge of the circle. So for instance, I measured from basically here to here, so that's the outside edge, and I want my wire to come in a little bit around center on this end here and this end here. So if I put this on here, put it on here like that you can see where my wire will be coming in. It'll be coming in right where I want it. Here and here. So in order to do this wire what I need to do is anneal or in order to do this plumbing I need to anneal this brass wire. So what I'm going to do is I need to anneal it where it's going to bend. So I'm going to put that in there. Center it as, you know, eyeball center it. Like that. I'm going to make a mark here and there on the wire. That's the point that I need to anneal around. I'm going to take that out get my candle going again
All right, so I know where my marks are. They're in black on there. So I'm just going to take that, and this is thicker wire, so you have to let it sit in there in the flame longer. All right, let that cool down. It's cooled down. I'll grab the other end, and we'll do the same thing. Now the reason we do the annealing, of course, is so that when we make the bend, it won't spring back. All right, so that takes care of, I got wax all over my fingers again. Get that off, okay. I got wax all over my glass plate too. I need to not tilt the candle. You just get this wax off real quick. There we go. Brush it off to the side. Okay. Worry about that later. Okay, so now we've got the ends annealed. So I'm going to put that back in here. The annealed area is over where I need it to bend. Now I'm going to hold I'm going to hold this wire down with this piece of 20 thousandths. I'm going to take a screwdriver. Now the distance from this where I bend to this edge I measured should be the distance from the center line of the sill here to the frame, the center sill on the frame. That way I can just cut it off at the edge and it'll it'll go right in. So we're going to take this now and we're just going to hold it down and we're going to just make the bend. Just like that. Do the same thing to the other end. I have to turn it around and do the same thing to the other end. I'm just going to make the bend. Just walk the screwdriver around. Just like that. Alright, now we can take that out. And the nice thing about having a tool like this is now that sits flat. So let's, I'll be putting that back in to cut it. Actually, let's just go ahead and cut it. Why not? Why not do that? Okay. Got it there. Let's get out the cutters. And we're just going to line them up with the edge. Cut there. Line it up with the edge. Cut there. Take it out now. Get myself my, uh, where they go? Oh, there it is. Diamond file. And I want to hold this always in a secure clamp or vise or something. And simply file the burrs off the end from cutting. Do the same thing to the other side. Got to make sure I stay on camera here. All right. So there we go, it's nice and flat. Now let's see how that works. Pull that away. I'm gonna put the brake end on that side. So this now is going to fit right like 
exactly where I want it. Just like that. So now what I need to do is I need to make the little brackets that hold it to the frame in four places. One here, one here, one here, and one here. So let me get all that set up and I'll go over how I do that. All right, in this step, we're going to be doing some soldering. So we know that the brake line or the plumbing is going to be on this side of the car. So that means the plumbing is going to be in this orientation in the finished product. So what we want to do is we want to flip that over because we need to solder the brackets to the underside. So what I'm going to do right here, let me put it right back here, is I'm going to tape that down real quick right there. Tape it down there and tape it down there because I'm going to be putting brackets on these two ends right here. Now the way I make brackets is you can make them one of two ways. You can either use this um, Detail Associates flat wire which is, let's see, I think it's 30 thousandths by 10 thousandths. So 10 by 30 flat wire or you can use a piece of round wire and flatten it in a machinist vise. I just chose to use this flat wire. So I'll cut, I need four pieces. So I'll just cut four pieces off real quick. One, two, three, and four. Okay. Now, prior to doing any soldering on this, after you anneal it, you need to clean up the area that you want to solder on. So I used a diamond file and just scratch the surface all the way down, all the way around. You want to do the same thing to your flat wire. So I'm just going to, the area that's going to be soldered, I want to clean up. Now I don't want to anneal these. I don't want to they don't they'll bend just fine without annealing. So what I do is I'll take a piece of of the same size wire, I'll tape that down, I'll put the cleaned up side over the wire, and I'll take some, some chisel tweezers, oh sorry I need to do this so that I can see it, <laughs> you'll be able to see it, I just need to do it so that I can see it. Put it that way. There we go. Put that piece of wire over it again. And then just take the chisel tweezers. Make sure it's perpendicular. And just press and squeeze them in. You want that wire to go as straight down as possible. Just like that. You're going to get these wings, but don't worry about that. You just take your... I think I need to get a new soldering iron. You just take these, and you just straighten them out. Just like that. Okay. So then, I'm going to take some... some flux and I'm going to put it on the end down here in the photograph the end brackets are very close to the bend so I'm just going to go ahead and put some there and take this piece put it right over it 
scooch it down where I want it. I need two more pieces of tape. Alright. And I want to tape this end down. And this end down. There we go, now I can work on it. And I want to put a little bit more flux. Over that area there, okay. And I just want to solder that. And that's it. So there's one bracket. Now what I'll do is I'll do the same thing for here. Then I'll measure so that they're evenly spaced across here and two more in the middle. So let me go ahead and do that and then I'll come back and show you what I do to clean all this up. Okay, so I have the brackets all welded in place. Oh, it's a little blurry. Second, there we go. So I have all the brackets welded in place. Um, I use some rubbing alcohol to clean all the excess um, flux off of them. And now we're just going to trim off these tabs. So I come in here. I trim them up as close to the pipe as possible and just cut them off and do that to the other side that one better. I need to get some new cutters too. They're not cutting so good. There we go. Now to clean that up we'll simply take a diamond file and we'll go around it to make it look round all the way around. I'm going to need to use some pliers to hold it like that. See if you can get on camera there. Ooh, see, it's bending it. So I need to be very careful. That's all right. That's part that was annealed, so I can I can go back and straighten that out easy. Just put the pliers in there, squeeze it. And we're good. All right. So you see how it's looks more like a bracket. I'm going to go back and I'm going to clean up some of the solder around here, around all of these. This one has a little solder tip on it, so I'm going to clean that up. But I'll go ahead and clean all of these up, just using a diamond file. Now with a diamond file, you can go both forwards and backwards. With a standard file, you should only go one direction. With a diamond file, you can go back and forth. So I'm going to go ahead, get this all cleaned up, 
and I'm going to go grit blast it and it'll be ready for mounting on the uh, model. Now some people have asked to see my grit blasting booths in videos that I've done before so this is a grit blasting booth. This is not available anymore. It's a North Coast Hobbies booth that I bought like 20 or probably 30 years ago and um, I've modified it. I've had a piece of um, half inch plate glass cut, had some holes cut in it so I could put some handles on it. I put these throw downs on there to lock it in place. Um, I've added, I've added a, there's a, there's a pistol gun and then there's a pencil right there. And one of the light bulbs is out. I'll have to just put a new one in there. And there's 180 grit, I think it is, aluminum oxide, or maybe 200 grit aluminum oxide. And then I feed it over here. There's a there's a valve system. I don't know if you can see it right in there that has one outlet or one inlet for the pistol and one inlet for the pencil. And that's basically it. Just hook the air up to it and grit glass. And here's the part after it's been grit blasted. I've also cleaned it up with alcohol to get it ready for gluing. Now with that grit blasting booth, I said that one's not available anymore. Um, there's a similar one that you can get through Harbor Freight. At least I know you could a few years ago. They might still have it. It's red and the difference in it is it's made out of metal and it has a side loading. Instead of lo where you saw I put in through the top, there's a door on the side. And it's about the same size, and if I needed to get a new one, that's probably the one I would get. Um, so, this part is now ready to be mounted onto the model. So we know which side it goes on. So we're going to set it in. I'm going to have to do the gluing off screen, but in a second, let me get this up here. There, that's better lighting. So this is now going to go basically right there, just like that. So I'm going to get it uh, all glued down and we'll move on to the next step. So to show the finished part, there's what it looks like. So I put glue in from behind on each of the mounting bracket points and I also put glue some thin CA along the inside here and along the inside here. So now it's nice and solid and it should not come off. Nice little additional detail added there. Now we move to the roof. So I need to cut this roof walk off and leave the pins in the holes where they're at. So these roof walks, I also want to leave the pins where the end where the uh, top of the roof walk can, or the end of the roof walk connects to the side of the car. I need, I need that bracket there so I have to leave those in there too. So let me get this cut off and I'll show you what it looks like after it's cut off and then I'll clean up the pins. Okay, so I've got the roof walk cut off. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. So I've got the roof walk cut off. I've left the outer supports for the um, edge piece that goes here. I still have to trim them, but I'll do that in the mill after I get the middle piece put on. Now to do that, I set the vise just far enough so that I can hold this in my hand and turn it just a little bit so that this surface is perpendicular to my milling bit and I can mill these down. Um, there's a line on the edge of these where the roof walk ends and the support begins so I can just cut right down to that and then just do the same on on this side. So I'll, I'll show that um, when I get when I get to that point. But right now we need to do the roof walk. So these are Titchy roof walks. You need two of them. You need one of these and you need the four of these, the side pieces. And the reason you need four of them, because 
these are not long enough to fill in this area. So I have to splice two of them together and then cut them to length to fit there. And I'll show you how I do that. So, but the first thing I need to do is I just need to cut out that and those four pieces. So I'm just going to use some side nippers and just go along here. Well, actually, first, stop right there. First, I want to measure or figure out how long I need to cut this piece while it's on this tree. It's easier to hold. So I'll put this end here, and that's going to be the last rib. So I'll mark this area, and that's where I need to cut it. I need to cut it off. Now I can cut it off the tree. So I don't think I need to put that on camera. It's just I'll just do a few of them. I'll just come along here and just nip them off. So I'll go ahead and get that done. When that's finished, I'll take a sanding stick and I'll just go along the edges and clean up all those um, sprue boogers and clean that all up. Then I'll trim this end and I'll go and cut and finish this end. Alright, so I've got these pieces cleaned up. Um, this is now cut to the length so it'll fit properly across the top like that. And these, and I've sanded, I've sanded the sides down and I've cleaned up the ends. So that one's ready for trimming. These ones, I just sanded the sides on them. I'll get to those later, so we'll put those aside. So now with the Titchy Roof Walk, what I like about it is it's made of plastic. I wish that manufacturers would make their freight cars and locomotives and such out of this kind of plastic. It's really, really um, liquid cement friendly. I like this a lot. So. One thing about the Titchy Roof Walk is if you look into it, and I don't think you can see that really on the camera, but when you have a, um, a mold, you have to have a draft angle. So if you look inside of these things, you see a flash at the bottom. That's on this side here, the flat side. And you also see this here. Cleaning that out is just forget it. Don't even try. Unless you have a mill. Uh, these measure... 27 thousandths thick, 0.027. So I'm going to bring it down to 20 thousandths thick. That'll open these holes up much better. It'll clean it up and give a much better grid look when you look down at, when you look down at it. So let me go set up at the mill and I'll show you how you do that. All right. So how am I going to hold this in here? Well, I'm not. I'm going to tape it to the top. So I use this tape, the Scotch permanent double-sided tape. And if I were to stick, I don't need to cut this side, but if I were to stick it on the bottom, it's really, really hard to get back up. But because I'm sticking it on the top, there's less surface area on the top than the bottom, so it'll come up very, very nicely. I mean, it'll hold down strong, but it'll come up nicely. So basically I just take a piece of tape, put it across the, the vise like that, cut that side off, then I get a, I get this straight edge and I stick it down to the tape and I don't this isn't necessary I do it so that when I cut it cuts straight I don't have to make unnecessary lengthy cuts back and forth this way so this way it goes easier so I'll stick this down on this end press it up against there just put it down on the vise take that off Make sure it's pressed down real good and tight, or good and strong. All right, now we're ready to cut. 
So I need to take I need to take seven thousandths off of this. Let me see if I can zoom this in a little bit more for you. So keep an eye on this end. This is where I'm going to start. This bit is a new bit, so it's really, really sharp, and it won't leave as much slough. Now, what I call slough is the little bits that hang on, the little plastic bits, plastic bits that hang on after you cut. And I'm going to spin this really, really fast. So what I'm going to do, you won't hear me talking if I turn it on. I'm going to start lowering this till I just barely, I mean just barely see a piece of plastic nip off. That tells me I'm at the surface. Then I'll zero my column and then I'll bring it down seven thousandths. Okay, I'm going to leave the mill where it's at. I'm not going to move it up or down. I can move it side to side and all I want, but I don't want to move the column. But I need to get that off of there. Let me clean some of this off. I need to get a new piece of tape on there because I need to do this end. Now to get this off, I have an old chisel blade. And I'll just go right underneath it and slide it right down. And there we have it. So, let me take this piece of tape off. Now prior to doing this, I cleaned this surface with lacquer thinner to clean it up good so the tape sticks good and there won't be any problems all right so let me get another piece of tape
Okay, in theory, this should be at the same height as the last other half I cut. So with leaving the bit at the same height, it should match up with that. So let's go see if that does that. Keep an eye on this end right down here. That looks pretty good. And that takes care of that. Now I'm not going to move the bit up any because I still have to do those um, side pieces. So I'm just going to leave it like it is and I'll do the side pieces later. So again, let me just clean this off. Take the uh, chisel, slide it under and just bring it on down. And that takes care of it. At this time, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little bit of slough in between the grids. I'm gonna take this out to the grit blasting booth and I'm gonna grit blast it and uh, clean up all of those openings and then I can, I can go ahead and start gluing it on here. So I've got the roof walk grit blasted. I cleaned out all the little bits that might be hiding on the edges and stuff. It worked out really well. Then I went in and washed it in warm soapy water and it's dry. Now it's time to glue it down. But you see how wavy it is? So I'm not going to be able to show you how I glue it down. It's just put some CA on there and get it set in place because I need to be over this thing to make sure everything lines up. But what I need to do there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine ribs or nine stringers that run all the way down. The second stringer in on each side needs to line up perfectly with the outer edge of each of these supports. So I'm going to have to get in here and it just barely sticks out over the end on each side. So in order to make this even all the way across I need to get in here like this and uh, get my head over it and all that stuff and make sure everything's lined up and in the right place so the process will be I'll put some glue here and then I'll carefully line it up and get it in place and then press it down and let it set I'll let that set up for a minute and then I'll come in and put some glue on there pull I'll have while this is glued to this side I want to pull on this to make sure it's stay straight and then press it down on that one just keep doing the same thing all the way down and there you have it it's all glued on so after I got this one set in place and it was in the right place I let it set for about a minute let the glue set then I hold this roof walk up just enough to get some glue laid a bead of glue laid on the next rib and then I would line 
the roof walk up with this, the following rib, which would keep it in line with the end rib, the, the rib I'm gluing, and then the, the next rib that would glued. And then I just do it all the way down. When I got down to the last two, I did them both at the same time because they just fell. They just fell right on top of each other. So that's the Titchy Roof Walk. That's the Titchy Roof Walk on the uh, Atlas car. So now it's time to do these sections. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim these ends so that, let me zoom on in and here a little bit. Okay. I'm going to trim these ends. I gotta take this overhang off and I gotta trim them so that I cut off about half of that rib right there. And I'll do that for each one and then I'll come back and I can glue them together and then I can go trim them on the mill. Actually, you know, the first thing I think I'll do is I'll, I'll trim the thickness down. So I'll go trim the thickness down on the mill. I'll do it exactly the way that I did this, so I don't need to show it again. Then I'm going to hang this piece over the edge of the mill with it, with it lined up, and I can use the mill and just trim those off and trim them halfway along that rib. All right, so I've got the the backs of these or the thicknesses trimmed down and I've got an edge cut halfway. Now I can just glue these together and I'll have one piece. So I need some liquid cement and I need a gap in there. So get this up here. I'll just tack them to begin with. Now to make sure that they're lined up, take that off of there, get me a straight edge, like that, and another straight, another straight edge. and just press them together just like that and now I'll put a bead of cement on the back side and again on the front press them together again and press them down And there I have a piece that will fit here and I can trim it to length first. So we'll do the next one. Here we go and put another bead on the back. And on the front. Just one more. There we go. And we're all done. Before I install it, I'll clean the ends off but now I gotta let that set up and dry same with this one and we'll get them set into the uh, into the roof okay remember how I said earlier I needed to trim these tabs um, I want to make sure they're the same height on all sides so that or at least 
in relation to each other so that when I put this end walkway piece on they they sit properly and level so when you look at the car one side's not up and down and so on and so forth so the way that I do that and also some people have asked in the past how do I hold things and and such well this is one of the way this is one of the situations where I can hand hold it basically so what I do is I make the jaws the appropriate width um, that I think they need to be I put the car in there and I need to make this roof line perpendicular to the milling bit so I've got it the, the jaws opened up a bit and I just tilt one side against the back of the vise and the bottom front against the front of the vise and I, I lower the the bit just enough to be above the roof and then I just move it along it and I look at it with my eye and if it looks like it's right then I go ahead and cut it right now it looks like the top of the roof here is a little bit closer than that actually let me see I need my hand over here Sorry about this, guys. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to call that one good. Now I'll raise the, the bit up. I'll bring it over. I need to cut these two pins here, or these two supports. And where the roof walk used to be, the bottom of the roof walk used to be, I can see. So I have a reference for cutting to. And there you have it. Those two are now cut even across. I'll go ahead and get the other end done and then we'll go get these end pieces put installed. And there we now have the standoffs trimmed down. This one you see a little phosphorus bronze pin because when I took the roof walk off the pin broke off so I had to replace it with a new pin. So now everything's solid in place. So now it's time to trim these pieces and get them installed. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up this end, put it up against there, figure out where I, where I need to cut it here, cut it, and then clean up that end. And then I have to put in the um, grab iron, and then I can glue it in place. I'll show you how I do the grab iron, but let me first get this cleaned up, cut, and sized for, for here. So I've got the um, end platforms done that go, that go here. Um, so they're glued together, 
they're trimmed to fit and I put the grab iron on them. Now this one's upside down so you can see these white pads here are 15 by 20,000 styrene strip and they fit cut, cut to fit perfectly in the grid and then I drill them and put uh, brass wire in them for the the um, grab iron and the bolt head is from a Titchy ladder set um, any bolt heads will do I just had those in and they were not the ladders weren't shot all the way so it was just the bolt head hanging on the sprue so I was like hey I can use those now I don't do standoff grab irons because the car I mean it's got molded on ladders and stuff like that so it's kind of part of the theme the way it goes I don't need them to be standoff because if you make something if you're building a car like this and you do a lot of fine scale stuff to it but you don't do everything to it everything sticks out like a sore thumb so that's the reason I do do it this way so now it's time to glue these on so the first thing to do is to glue this upper portion while holding this where it needs to be. So let me get some Tamiya cement here and we will hold this where it's supposed to be and just put a little bit on there so it'll hopefully tack it in place. There. Now I can put a little bit more in there and then adjust it. There's that. Now I need to adjust this. Let me wide angle this a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I need to get these over the pads properly. Let's see. Right. Yep, that's right there. All right, and it's where I want it to be up there. So I'm gonna let that set for a minute and put a little bit more on there. Make sure it's level where it needs to be all the way across. All right, now I'll take some CA on my little pin. I use broken drill bits. I, used, I did this for a long, long time. I think for about 20 years I've been doing these. Just keep my broken drill bits, use them to apply CA. So I gotta lift this up, put some CA there, Keep it lifted, put some CA there, and then drop it down. And that side's done. So I'll go ahead and do this side. It'd be the same way. Glue the upper end, let it set for a second, make sure it's where it needs to be, and then put CA down there. So we're almost done with this car. We've got the roof walk pieces in. Everything's lined up properly. It's square and, and all that. So I like what it looks like. That's going to stay that way. Now it's time to do the trucks. Now when I did the last, the first model, I had pre-cut some of the parts so that um, I wouldn't have to take too long to do it in this one. So in my lathe, I squared up one end and um, then just cut it off, square it up the end, and then cut it off. So I've got these. These are the, the, uh, the truck pins. Now, let me zoom in here. So, this boss right here is .138 diameter. The hole in these trucks is .127. So I use a .140 drill bit and I just cut the trucks open or the pinhole open more and now they will fit down where they're supposed to be. 
But the problem is this screw that I'm using, these screws here, oh, where am I at here? These screws I'm using fall through that hole. So I cut these washers to go above and the uh, will hold the truck in. So you'll see that. You'll see now the truck is held in place properly. So to make the washers, I just squared up one end, sliced it off, taped them down to the top of my mill, and, and just cut them down to about, oh, what are these things? About 30 thousandths thick. So that's my washers. But what I have to first do is I have to glue these. This is a standard tube and it fits right over the initial um, Atlas pin. So I'm just going to put some CA around that. And I'm going to side is it right there we go. Just glue that down. Just like that. And do the same thing on this side. And now I'll let that set up. But in the meantime, I had to sacrifice a Kato truck so that I knew how much to cut these down. So I, I cut a truck in half and left the pinhole there after I drilled it out. So now I can set that around that and I can see where the shelf is and mark this pin and just cut it down. Do that on both ends. So let, I'm going to let this set up. I'll mark these. I'll cut them down. I'm just going to put this in the mill just like that and just come across and just face them down. Well, there it is. Got the pins um, trimmed down. Truck swivel nicely. The only last thing to do is to take a countersink tool. This will help guide the truck screw. And just clean out the holes a little bit. And then I just have to thread the holes with the screw. When you do this, you want to make sure that when you back it out, you clean out any plastic that may cause problems with uh, it binding. And we'll go back in there and do it again. I don't want to twist. Oh, sounds like something's breaking, but we'll see. Nope, everything looks good. Alright, let's clean out this slough on the top there. See if I get down in there, clean out some of that plastic. Okay, let's put a truck on. Then I'll do the other side. Then I put my washer on there. Clean the threads out of 
the screw. Put the screw in there. Oh, a little too tight. Back it out. There we go. And there's one of the trucks. So I'll go ahead and do this side and we'll be all done. All right. The reason you heard that snapping sound is because I forgot to do one thing. Is take a 054 drill bit and drill a little bit further down into the hole because the snapping was this screw making contact with the part that wasn't drilled and pulling the bolster up a little bit. So I've done that and everything's good. Um, real quick, um, I didn't use tubing for these things. I used this uh, super styrene and it, what was really nice about it, it's exactly the diameter of this boss so it matches the, the pin diameter of the boss and then I, dr I center drilled it um, uh, for the for the screw or I'm sorry I center drilled it the diameter of the little pin that sticks out of the atlas frame so let's put this screw in or let's thread this hole back it out Clean the threads off. There we go. I'm pretty clumsy a lot of times with these things. It's a surprise they last very long. Let me clean out the threads. Or clean out the plastic. Alright, let's go back in and get it finished threading this. And that's it. Clean the threads out. Let's countersink that hole a little bit more. Get all the plastic out of there. And put the truck on. It's a little tight, so I'll just take a knife and just carve a little bit out on the inside. There we go. Put the washer in there. There we go. And put the screw in. And we have a car that's all finished, ready for painting. So there we go. Well, that takes care of the build portion of this KONG PS2 2 bay hopper. I hope you really enjoyed that. Um, it was a lot of fun, and now I have two cars that are ready for paint. We'll be revisiting these um, cars at a later date when it's time to put the uh, paint and decals on them. But right now, I need to get back on the SD45 build. Um, it's been lingering for enough time. I've got the next step done, so it's time to move on to that. But before I leave, let's take a look at these two cars on the track. Well, there you have it. Two cars that I think will be a really nice addition to my collection or to my freight car fleet. I look forward to getting back to these, getting some paint, uh, decal, and weathering on them, and actually just getting them done. But I'll revisit that later on, like I said, in another video. So, again, thank you for watching.